guys welcome back let's finish the the paper so we're left with our only five questions so let's get right to it so question 21 it says the diagram shows the straight line here and the straight line the equation for the straight line is 3x plus 4y equal to 12 and it cuts the y the x-axis at point p it cuts the y-axis at point q then part a says state the coordinates of points p and q so the first part um it asks us to state the coordinates for for p here so at p at p y equal equals zero so you can see that it's on the x-axis on the x-axis y equal to zero so here it can be maybe one zero it can be two zero maybe it can be three zero four zero just like that all the points here the y ordinate equals to zero so we have to find the x ordinate okay so you say 3x plus 4y equal to 12 and then you substitute here the, the value of y which is zero for our case then you get 12 then you get 3x equal to 12 then you get x equal to 4 like this after having divided uh, by three both sides so therefore p is what is 4 0 so p here it's 4 0 okay so let's try to find q real quick so at q so this is part 2 okay at q x equal to 0 so this one is the y axis on the y axis x equals 0 so that's it so x equal to x equal to 0 so we have to find the value of y so 4x plus 4 uh, 3x plus 4y equal to 12 x equal to 0 so you get 4y here equal to 12 then you get 4y equal to 12 then you divide both sides by 4 you get y equal to 3 so therefore the coordinate for q is what 0 for x and 3 for y let's move to the b part the B part says find the gradient of this line B item 1 the gradient equal to change in Y over change in X so here we have these two points already so if you choose this one this Q you have to start with Q so change in Y Q ordinate is 3 then the Q or uh, the Y ordinate for P it's it's 0 so the Y ordinate for Q it's 3 like this so since we started with this that means we also have to start with the same uh, if we started q then it has to q has to come first again for the x part if you don't do that then what we are or what you happen is that you risk getting your your minus your sign here it'd be different so if you start with 3 3 minus 0 you also have to go back and say 0 minus minus 4 so you get this this one is your gradient we use these two points if you are fast or if you want to be safe here is another way to you to do it so 3x plus 4y equal to 12 because the previous method it relied on us having those points correctly okay if you have those points wrong then you're certainly going to get that part wrong as well but then there is a way that you can do it without using these points with uh, just using the information that's given so how do you do it you just have to express your equation in the form y equal to mx plus c so m here is the gradient and c is the y intercept okay so you have to manipulate this first to this form so you do that by this one should be 4y equal to this one goes there negative 3x plus 12 like this then you divide throughout by by 4 so you divide everything by 4 you get y equal to negative 3 over 4 x plus 12 divided by 4 you get 3 okay so therefore so you can even write uh, by inspecting this okay so you can even write uh, this it's okay then you say therefore gradient m equal to negative 3 over 4 so we used uh, two methods to compute the gradient 
and we say that the second method it's safer the second method it's safer because you are not using the information that you calculated if you calculated those ones wrong then using the some the first method that we used you'd certainly get the the answer wrong as well so if you can just use the the second method and we're quickly going to the part b part b wants the length of uh, this line pq okay so the length of a line if you have uh points let's say p1 equal to you uh, x1 y1 and p2 equal to you, x2 y2 p1 p2 this length is equal to you. so this this one this buzz it means size okay it means size or magnitude or length it's equal to you, x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared okay all this they are under a square root sign so let's do the same for our pq so p q equals so we put our square root and once we do that we for x it's 0 minus 4 squared plus for y it's 3 minus 0 squared so here you get square root through and through then you get 4 squared plus 3 squared then you get square root of 16 plus 9 then you get square root of 25 then you get 5 okay don't write plus or minus size is always positive so that's why we're writing 5 so you can say 5 units okay if there is no unit given just say 5 units question 22 says uh, you have this height you have the number of plants so this one is called frequency so the diagram shows the heights of 30 plants so this is the total number of plants that you have then state the model class model class what does it mean it means the class with the highest frequency so the model class is the is the class with this 10 so you should be It should be this and then you're done so part two says estimate the mean height uh, of the plants so this one it's a little bit tricky what you do is so h you can say h by here for mean equal you can say h min okay subscript so it's equal to you you have to check the the middle value here for 20 and 30 the middle value is 25 so 25 by 4 plus 35 by 6 plus 45 by 10 plus 55 by 2 plus 65 by 8 okay so let me just take a ruler real quick and then uh, write uh, this so that's it and over what over the total the total is what 30 30 plants okay so you have to uh multiply through uh, you have to simplify all this so you get uh 100 35 by 6 what do you get so 35 by 6 real quick you get 0 3 then 18 21 so 210 so 100 plus 210 plus then here you get 450 plus then you get 110 plus 65 by 8 okay multiply by 8 get 0 4 here then you get 48 52 so 520 here divided by 30 so here you get um you can simplify in steps okay so let's punch this one and this one let's punch uh these two first so you get you get 660 so you get 660 here from this one and this one so you get 760 760 plus then we bunch these other two so this one again 660 plus 1760 plus here you get 
6.30, okay. So 6.30 here, divided by 30. So you'll be having like plenty of space. So I'm just uh, utilizing the space that I have here. So let's uh, do it on the side again. We have 760 plus 630. So you get 9. So you get uh, 15. So you have 1590 divided by 30. Okay. So what do you get? Let me just use a different uh, pen here. So 3 into 3, 1 into 15, you get 5. 3 into 9, you get 3. Okay. So it's 53 watt, 53 centimeters. Don't forget you write the units. Okay. So the all mean for, for all the heights, it's uh, 53 centimeters. So we just had to check the central. So we have 20. You can even say 20 or to 30. 25 here, this one 35 here in the middle, this one 45 here, this one 55 here, this one 65. Okay, then we say multiply by the frequency for each. So here, here, here times 2, here times 2, then here, the year times 8, then here you get 110, here we got 520, here we got uh, 210 for this part, in this part we got 100. And then we added everything. We got 1590 divided by 30. Then we got this one. So that's it. Part B, what does it say? Part B says a plant is chosen at random from the garden. Okay, so you're choosing a plant at random from the garden. Find the probability that its height is more than 60 but less than or equal to, is more than 40 but less than or equal to 60. So it means this and this. And wherever you see all oh, this one, we call uh, I call them buzzwords. Okay, uh, these are these buzzwords. They are very instrumental in in uh, informing the strategy that we 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 take into to getting the answer. So all oh, usually means the the events they are independent, and also it means that we have to add the probabilities. So here the probability would be the separate probability for h greater than forty but less than or equal to 50 plus the separate probability for h greater than 50 but less than or equal to 60 okay so we are taking these probabilities separately so here this one is 10 by the total which is uh, the total is 30 okay so 10 that 10 by 30 and plus here the probability is 2 2 by 30 so all in all you get 12, 12 by what? By 30. So once you get 12, what do you do? You divide here by, by 6, 12 divided by 6, you get 2, 12 divided by, uh, 30 divided by 6, you get 5, okay. So you get the probability as 2 over 5. So that's it for question 22, let's quickly move to question 23. Question 23 says the diagram shows the triangle ABC in which points D and E are on BC, okay? This, where it's, it was supposed to read uh, point D is on BA and point E is on BC respectively, okay? So I just skipped uh, some part there. I omitted some part rather. But it was supposed to read that as, as, as you can see here, D is on point, E is on line, A, B and E is on line, BC. Then we have all these measurements. Name the triangle which is similar to triangle ABC. So ABC, we need the triangle which is similar to that. So the first thing, the first hint, this one is a dead giveaway. The first hint is that you only have two triangles. So obviously it's going to be this small triangle. But then we have to be careful in how we're going to write our triangle. Because we are starting at A. This angle is equal to this angle. So this angle. A, it means that for the corresponding side, this angle is A, for the corresponding side, uh, it should be E. And this one is coming from A, going to B to the top. So this one also go to B. So it's E, B, D. So this triangle here is the triangle that's similar to uh, the bigger triangle.
So yeah, that's that's it. That's done. It's only one mark. And the second part says calculate A B. So calculate A B the side. So you use similar, you use the concept of similar triangles. So first write what you want to calculate. So you want to calculate A B. Then find the corresponding side to A B. Usually it's given. So this one, it's side, it's a side that's similar to this side here. So it's similar to 4.2. So you can even write 4.2 here. Or you can just uh, let's write the sides first. So that there's no confusion. So A B, the corresponding side to A B, it's B E. If you compare the how we wrote those triangles, you can see also the same thing, you can arrive at the same conclusion. And now you just have to find two corresponding sides that are given. A B was for the big triangle, so we are going to take A C for the big triangle as well, corresponding to, to D E. So you get A B equal to A C over D E multiplied by B E. Okay. I just took this and then cross multiplied it. So you can also multiply by B E both sides, you'd get the same result. And A C, what's what's our AC? Our AC is 3.5 by D E D E, what's our D E? It's 2.1. Then multiply by B E, what's our B E? It's 4.2. Okay. So here if you want, you can just multiply this by, by 10 if you want. So you get 35 over 21 by 4.2, like this. So let's start cancelling stuff. So five or seven, seven into you twenty one, you get three, and seven into this you get five. Three into three you get one into you, you get one. Remainder what? Remainder one. Three into you, you get four. So four by five, what do you get? Uh four one point four by five, what do you get? You get seven point uh you get seven. If you want you can even say seven point zero, it's still okay. So 7.0 watt centimeters. And then this would be your answer. 23B. 2023B item 2. Uh, okay, calculate the area of triangle ABC given that the area of B uh, D E is 22.5. So you need area of triangle A. B, C. So you have the area of triangle B, D, E, like this, of this triangle here. So here you have to use the area factor. So here I'm going to write here area factor. Okay. So the area factor is equal to, to the length factor squared. So what's the length factor? For ABC, ABC that's our big triangle, okay? So for a big triangle, we can find two corresponding sides. So it's uh, 3.5 here, because we have this one as well. And we divide by the corresponding side for our case, for the smaller triangle, it's 2.1 like this. Then we have to square, okay? Don't forget to square. If it were volume, you would need the volume factor. The volume factor, you have to cube, okay? So here you get, let's just say, area of triangle A, B, C over area of triangle D, sorry, this one is B, D, E, equal to you. Here, if you still remember, we got, this one would be 5 over, 5 over, um, over 3. So you get 35 over... 21 then we get 7 into 21 you get 3 7 into 35 we get 5 okay so you actually get 5 over 3 and this one is squared so area of triangle a b c equal to this one should be 25 over 9 multiply by area of triangle a B, uh, no, no, this should be area of triangle B, D, E, like this. So here you get 25 over 9, multiply by the area, this area is given already, the area of B, D, E, it's equal to 22.5, okay. 
So how do you go about uh, working this out? Mm, 9 into 9, 1 into 22, you get 2. Remainder what? Remainder 4. 9 into 45, you get 5. So 2.5 times 20, 25. So question 24, what does it say? It says the diagram shows the velocity time graph of a moving object which accelerates uniformly from 36 to 54 okay, meters per second. And it does this in 6 seconds, which is shown here. It then retards uniformly to rest until uh, in a further 9 seconds. So here this is retardation. Calculate the acceleration during the first 6 seconds. So during the first 6 seconds, which means uh, the acceleration for this part. And acceleration for his velocity time graph, the acceleration is the gradient. Okay, so for this part, uh, this one, this point would be zero three six. This point would be six fifty four. Okay, so the acceleration is the gradient. So you can even say acceleration is gradient. Gradient. So the acceleration is the gradient. So you can say m equal to, which is the acceleration rate. You now use the. You are now using the the two points here. You can even write them. Uh, we are going to use the those points and all that. It's still okay. But then m would be equal to. You say fifty four minus thirty six. Change in y. So fifty four minus thirty six divided by six minus zero. So 54 minus 36, you get uh, 18 here, divided by 6. So what do you get? 3. 3 watt meters per second squared. Okay, acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. B part 24, part B, it says the velocity after 10 seconds. So you want to calculate, I don't know where exactly, but we can just estimate and say, okay, this is where the velocity is, okay. We just know that this is 10 so at this point it's 10 V that's the velocity this line is a straight line so the gradient here should be the same we had our point here we had said our point is 654 and in this one we also we can also deduce the point for this one it's 15 0 okay so the this one it's a straight line so for a straight line the gradient is the same so what we're going to try to do here is to get the gradient from these two points and then equate it to a gradient for these two points. You can also choose this two, but then these complicate things, okay? Just use this since we have a zero here. So we're going to say gradient is constant. If you want, you can also write that. Or you can just say M, then you write that uh, you're indicating that with the gradient, okay? So it's equal to 54 minus it will be 54 minus 0 here, divided by 6. We are, we are going back to where we started, 6 minus 15 for our case. So equal to you, and then we are doing the same thing, but we are doing for this two. So it will be equal to V minus 0 over 10 minus 15. Okay, it's done. So here you get 54 divided by minus 9 here, equal to V divided by minus 5. So V equal to 54 divided by minus 9 times minus 5. So you start cancelling stuff. 9 into 9, you get 1 into 54, you get 6, 6 times this, then you get uh, 30. Okay, the, the negative and negative, they will cancel, then you just get 30 meters per second. Don't forget to write the units. So our answer should be 30 meters per second, and then you're done. So what we did there was that this ordinate, this is a popular question by the way, so just uh, really take note. Sometimes they, they recycle some of these questions, at least in terms of concept. So you want to really make sure that you have this one in the bag because it comes uh, regularly. So here it comes in the ZIMSEC uh, exam regularly. So here what we did was that we defined this point as 10 since we're given uh, the time so it's 10 v v that's the unknown that's what we have to find if you want you can even say let the velocity 
after 10 seconds PV, okay? Then you say the gradient is constant. Then you try to find gradient using two of the known points. Just find two, any two points that you can know from, from uh, you know, just the, the diagram. So here we use those two points. And equal to, we use those two points again. And then we found the value of V as 30 meters per second. So that's what we did. Part C, it asks us, it asks us to find the average speed of the object for the, for the 15 seconds. So average speed equals to, okay, let me, let me write it here, I think. Average speed, you should just know this equal to total distance divided by total time okay so total distance in travel graphs this is this is very popular they ask this a lot so average speed you go to total distance divided by total time now for a velocity time graph the total distance is the area under the, the graph so total distance here i'm going to use this this one is called sigma so sigma simply means total uh simply means total or sum okay you can use this it's, it's just a greek letter that is very popular in maths we uh, it means total okay afterwards you just have to find the uh, distance for this and distance for this so how do you do that uh this is a parallel with this one it's a trapezium so a is a trapezium so for a trapezium we have sides um let me just write here area of a trapezium is half a plus b times height okay so a and b they are parallel sides and then height is this one so half a a means this side so 36 plus 54 so a and b are your parallel sides times height height is the perpendicular to you uh, are the is perpendicular to the parallel sides so it'd be six plus this one is just a triangle so it'd be half base base is what 15 minus 6 here so here it's 15 minus 6 it's not 6 it's not 15 so just be careful there multiply by 54 so like this and uh, what you get here is 90 so you have half of 90 by 6 plus half of here you get 9 by 54 so you get 90 by 3 here then here you get 9 by 27 okay so what we did there was um, I simply did 22 1 into those you get 3 then here 22 1 into 54 you get 27 so that's what we got here and this one is 270 this one you have to determine so 27 multiplied by 9 63 6 okay and then here 18 18 plus 6 you get 24 okay 18 plus 6 you get 24 so you have 243 here so you get 5 513 i think but let's just uh work it out and uh 70 plus 243 here then you get 3 then here you get 11 so yeah so 513 so 513 and then you also have to write the units the units for this are in meters okay but then that's not what you want you want the the average speed so total time equal to 15 seconds so now average speed Make sure you're we you're not all haphazard you're not all over the place like what we are doing we're trying to save space and also uh you know so that you have you can also see the question as we work it out so that's why it's like this but otherwise you're supposed to be very neat okay so it's 515 divided by 15 like this so here it's so 15 into 15 1 into this one you get 3 as in 45 and then you're left with 6 and then 15 into 63 you get 4 and you're left with 3 
15 into 30, what do you get? You get 2. So your answer would be 34.2 meters per second. So when you find you asked to find the average speed, you have to calculate the total distance. Total distance is area under the curve. And this is only for a velocity time graph. Okay. This is velocity against time. If it's distance against time, it's a different thing altogether. But this one is velocity against time. So velocity against time, the total distance is the area under the curve. And the total time is simply the time given. So the area under the curve, we have to break it into shapes. The fewer shapes there you have, the better. For this one, we had this one is a trapezium. We had this one, it was a triangle. Then we added, and then we got 512, 513 as our distance. Then we, our total time was 15. Then we simply divided the two. We got this one, which is uh, 34.2 meters per second. Question 25, question 25 says, uh, okay, in this you're supposed to take pi is 22 over seven. I think it's become known to you that um, most of the times that's what you have to do. So two identical circular and two semicircular disks of red eye, 3.5. So these disks are of red eye, 3.5. So uh, just from here to here, this is 3.5. And then from here to here again, this is 3.5, okay. So these disks, the radius is this. And they are cut from a rectangular sheet. So this one was a sheet, okay, of metal as shown in the diagram. AE is equal to that, uh, the other part is equal to that, yeah. So what is it exactly that's required of us? Let's see. So now I've put the, the dimensions and the first part says calculate the circumference of one of the circular disks. So the circumference here. A circumference equal to what? The formulas for circumference, you probably know it. It's pi d or two pi r, okay? It's just to give you the same thing. But since we have radius, that's why we used uh, 2 pi r. And our pi is 22 over 7. Our r is what? 3.5. So what we are going to do is uh, to cancel stuff. So uh, 7 into 7, 1 into 3, 0. Then into 35, it's 5. And here we get 44. Multiply by 0 0.5, so it simply means half of 44, which is 22. 22 watt centimeters, okay? So what we did here was uh, we just substituted the, the, we just wrote the formula. We wrote it can be pi d or it can be 2 pi r. So since we had r, then we just used that one. So we got, uh, we, we substituted and then we got 22 centimeters. Perimeter is measured in uh, units, so just uh, not not square units, not cube units, just the units. So if it's centimeters, then you just get your, uh, centimeters there. So the B part says the perimeter of A, B, C, D, uh, A, B, B, C, D, E. So A, B, C, D, E. So the perimeter of the whole thing. So this one is a rectangle. So perimeter of a rectangle, it's equal to what? Probably know it. Two by length plus width, okay. This is primary school stuff. So it's 14 plus 10.5 like this. Then two, then you get uh, 24.5 here for this part. And once you get 24.5 multiplied by two, you get 49, I think. So 48 plus, yeah, so 49. 49 watt, you have to put the units, 49 centimeters like this. And then you're done. The third part, the third part says calculate the area of the shaded region. So the shaded region will be uh, this region that has got this color. So the region that's not black, that's the shaded region. So how do we go about it? So we just, uh, here we have to recognize that we have one, two, and three circles, okay? This is this is one circle. So this is semi semi semicircle, this is semicircle. Together they are one circle. Okay. So you actually have three circles. So area equal to so area of rectangle minus three times area of circle, okay, or circular part. 
so area of rectangle what do what do you do you, you just say 14 by 10.5 okay then minus 3 times a of circle a of circle what is it it's um it's pi r squared here yeah. so let's continue and then see what did happen so a of a circle it's pi r squared so that's why we put the three is simply because we have three uh circles okay so this one should be 22 over 7 and our r should be it was 3.5 i think so 3.5 squared like this if you want to also let me just create some space here um to avoid confusion what you do is write this one as 3.5 by 3.5 okay like this and now you start canceling stuff so 7 into 7 into we got 0 0.5 is just you remember that time so here you get 11.33 so you get 14 by 10.5 minus this one you get 43 so this one uh, 0 0.5 means half if you still remember from previous then times 22 you get 11 11 times 3 you get 33 so 33 times 3.5 like this so you just have to multiply all those so the ordinary method from primary school this is how we would do it so here how many decimal places do we have we have only one so here should be zero five zero one so we put a zero first and then we just say it one times everything there then we got that here we get 20 zero k2 here we got zero plus two then here we got four then we add then zero seven four one okay and we had one decimal place so we got 147 so yeah for this one we don't we don't have any any other option we actually have to to do it it's different than the previous one so here we have one decimal place and we are multiplying again so we get zero and then we get 99 here three by this three three by this and then here we get 15 so it's 5k1 here you get 15 plus 1 16 and then we just have to add this and we get 5 here you get 15 5k1 and then here you get 11 and then you have to put your comma so it's plus 115.5 okay so now we have to add 115.5 plus plus 147 the reason I am doing all this is because you're not allowed to have a calculate so you'd actually go through the same process as I'm, I'm doing right now this is paper one so here you get 5 here you get 12 so 2k1 here you get 6 here you get 2 okay so and then there's a comma here so you'd get what you'd get 262.5 and don't forget your units your units are square centimeters so that's it for for this paper we usually upload like one paper every every week so if you have any suggestions any paper that you want us to look at any subject that you want us to look at just uh, comment in the comment section below and if you want cambridge exams as well just comment in the i uh, just put uh, the stuff in the in the comments uh, in the comment section and then we'll certainly get to it and also if you want to join our learning program so we have prima ed we actually have like topic by topic videos not those our uh, vision studies with vision studies we are offering for free but our topic for topic videos you could come and then check it out on at primaed.com so that's primaed.com you can see the the link um and then when when whenever a video starts you can you can actually see the link there so i hope to see you there and um yeah so take care cheers thanks for watching like share and subscribe